Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The USS Gerald R. Ford would ultimately become the largest aircraft carrier in the world, and, by displacement, the biggest warship ever built. It is the lead vessel in its class, which also bears its name. These cutting-edge aircraft carriers are the most sophisticated in the U.S. Navy, stretching over 1,000 feet in length and able to accommodate as many as 80 aircraft at once. Its construction was a massive effort, beginning in 2005 and culminating with its commissioning in 2017. Though it has yet to see deployment, the USS Gerald R. Ford already serves as the centerpiece of the Navy fleet. Like many other U.S. Navy ships, the Gerald R. Ford was built at Newport News Shipbuilding in Virginia. This facility has produced nine Nimitz-class carriers and many other naval vessels. The Ford, officially designated CVN-78, had its program launched on August 11th with a ceremonial steel cutting. That initial piece of steel would eventually become part of the carrier's side shell. Progress was slow at first, but two years later, the ship's key modules began to come together and take form. Despite the shipyard's century-long tradition of crafting military vessels, the Gerald R. Ford introduced many first-in-class innovations. Notably, it was the first American carrier to feature the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS, which uses linear induction motors instead of steam pistons. This results in smoother acceleration, placing less stress on aircraft frames. Additional features include greater automation for operations with fewer personnel, and a new A1B nuclear reactor, which is more efficient, yet more powerful. EMOLS is paired with an advanced arresting gear system that relies on electromagnets for energy absorption, allowing safer landings for unmanned drones. Global powers have explored the use of aircraft carriers since the dawn of aviation. In fact, just seven years after the Wright brothers' first flight, experiments with flight from ship decks were already underway. The U.S. launched its first carrier in 1922 to support its growing air power. By World War II, aircraft had become essential strategic tools, prompting a surge in carrier production. During the war, the U.S. Navy operated roughly 105 carriers, while the Royal Navy had around 14. Over time, both aircraft and carrier technologies advanced, with early catapults giving way to the more capable Katabar system, and the ships themselves growing substantially larger.
Modern carriers such as those in the Nimitz and Ford classes are essentially floating cities, deployable to any region worldwide. They house between 3,000 and 5,000 crew members and are packed with billions of dollars in advanced systems designed to withstand attacks. The straight decks of older carriers have been replaced with angled landing strips and twin catapult areas, doubling the launch rate of aircraft. These innovations have proven their worth. The last carrier lost in combat was sunk in July 1945. Despite losing 12 carriers during World War II, no foreign adversary has managed to sink an American carrier since the Bismarck Incident at the Battle of Iwo Jima. Although carriers can undergo upgrades and refurbishments, they eventually must be retired. Once decommissioned, they face a lengthy process before disposal. The USS Forrestal, one of America's earliest supercarriers, served for 38 years before being retired in 1993. It took over 10 years to strip sensitive systems, information, and technologies. In 2014, it was towed from Philadelphia to Texas for scrapping. These massive ships contain hundreds of thousands of pounds of valuable metals that can be recovered, recycled, and repurposed. Aircraft carriers being colossal ocean-going vessels, are not well suited for tight harbor spaces. To navigate these narrow areas, tugboats assist by pushing and pulling them into docking positions, where they are securely moored using time-honored methods. One early method was warping mooring the ship with a heavy object or fixed point on shore, then hauling it using ropes and capstans. The first tugboats were steam-driven. Scottish engineer William Symington built the first such vessel, the Charlotte Dundas, in 1802. It used paddle wheels and a watt steam engine. Over time, Tugboat technology has evolved with stronger hulls, more powerful engines, and advanced systems like azimuth thrusters for superior control. These robust machines guide massive 100,000-ton aircraft carriers safely to port. Despite these changes, Mooring still involves fastening ships to the dock with lines. Mooring a Nimitz class aircraft carrier demands precise coordination. Tugboats help guide the ship to the pier. The bosun and deck crew prepare fenders to protect the hull. As the carrier nears the dock, mooring lines, such as hawsers, are tossed to waiting line handlers on shore. Onboard winches control the slack of these lines. The dock's bollards and cleats secure the bow, stern, breast, and spring lines. 
These lines are carefully adjusted to maintain balance and keep the vessel steady. Once moored, electrical cables are connected for shore power. The entire procedure requires expert navigation and seamless teamwork. As the ship nears port, navigation slows to harbor speeds. Port control and the ship's bridge coordinate the maneuvers, while tugboats assist. The deck department assigns crew to mooring stations fitted with capstans and bits. The vessel slowly advances toward the pier. Deck personnel launch heaving lines through equipment like chocks and fair leads, which are then attached to the larger mooring lines. While tugboats maintain their positions, dock workers fasten the lines to bollards. Winches and capstans tighten them to ensure even tension. Once secured, adjustments are made to enable gangway deployment and commence shore operations. Not just any rope will suffice for mooring a massive warship like a Nimitz-class carrier. Multiple line types are used to provide secure docking. Bow lines prevent forward motion and hold the front in place, while stern lines stop the ship from drifting backward. Breast lines extend perpendicularly to hold the ship snug against the dock. Spring lines stretch diagonally from the bow and stern, controlling longitudinal movement. Headlines, similar to bow lines but anchored further forward, add extra stability. Aft lines, like stern lines but placed farther back, also enhance stability. Each plays a role in resisting tides and external forces. Before a Nimitz-class carrier can depart, the mooring lines must be properly handled. Under the bosun's guidance, the deck crew readies the vessel for release. Communication continues with port control and the tugs. Winches slowly ease the tension on the lines. Breast and spring lines are let go first, followed by bow and stern lines. Each is reeled in carefully, guided through fair leads and capstans to prevent tangles. Dockside handlers help remove lines from bollards. Once all lines are secured aboard, they are neatly coiled and stored. The tugboats then maintain the ship's position until it clears the berth. Proper mooring ensures the ship remains stable, with bow, stern, breast, and spring lines tightly fastened and tensioned. Fenders cushion any contact with the dock. Before departure, crew inspect the mooring setup for stability and then properly stow all lines. Tugboats guide the ship away, while crew members man their stations. U.S. Navy carriers are equipped with two anchors, 
and the deck crew must be proficient in their operation. The bosun-led deck department provides training on anchor handling. Sailors learn to use the windlass for paying out and retrieving the anchor chain. They practice operating brake releases and chain stoppers to control anchor weight. Drills ensure seamless communication between the bridge and deck. Emphasis is placed on safety, wearing protective gear, and staying clear of snapback zones. Simulation exercises prepare the crew to execute anchoring in a variety of sea conditions with efficiency and caution. Though rare, ships do lose their anchors. One such case occurred on the 26th of September, 2019, near White Beach, Okinawa, Japan. Marines, Navy divers, and military contractors worked together to retrieve a lost anchor that had disrupted anchoring operations for weeks. The recovery process began by pinpointing the anchor's location followed by collaboration with contractors to retrieve it. Salvage missions are complex, involving skilled divers, underwater positioning, and heavy lifting gear. Due to poor visibility and underwater hazards, strict safety measures are vital. Ultimately, the mission succeeded, and the anchor was recovered. The USS Gerald R. Ford isn't just the most sophisticated carrier ever created. It stands as a floating testament to American naval power and engineering prowess. With innovations like EMALS, a next-generation nuclear reactor, and the careful seamanship needed to operate such a giant, the Ford-class aircraft carriers define the next era of maritime dominance and deterrence. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.